Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch You Want, and thanks for logging on. Today, we are looking at the heart of Alango Unsuna, the great Saxon watch manufacturer. This is the Alango Unsuna Lango One, the face of the company, the savior of East German watchmaking at the high horology level, arguably the most important single reference to come out of Saxony since the fall of the Berlin Wall. It is a living legend. Every inch the embodiment of Saxon watchmaking craft, it's also a thoroughly modern timepiece. If I had to equate it to an automobile, I would say this is the watchmaker's equivalent of something like the BMW Z8 Roadster of the early 2000s. Completely differential to tradition, but absolutely cutting-edge technology incorporated and handmade throughout. So let's take a little look at this Z8 for your wrist. See what it has to offer, where it fits in the Alanga Unzuna modern continuity. Talk some tech, and then just bring out some of the styling features that really set it apart, not just from the other German watches, but from Swiss watchmaking in general. Because after all, the competitors in Switzerland probably got schooled by this one, and I think more than any, the Langa One is responsible for the flourishing of high horology finishing standards that we've seen in Switzerland over the last decade and a half. So let's take a look at this pace setter and see what it brings to the table. So the Langa One is the emblematic reference of its namesake manufacturer. It was in the catalog from 1994 when Walter Langa and Gunter Blumlein, formerly of GALC, but ultimately more of the patron saint for the recovery of Langa, they launched the company. Now, Walter Langa was the last scion of the original Langa family. Now, German watchmaking collectivized since the early 50s. There was a lot of discontinuity, and refounding the old names required a lot of upfront credibility. And having no continuity, no tradition, very few survivors from the pre-war watchmaking era, the company decided that its best bet was to try to make everything in-house, to demonstrate manufacturer competence right off the bat. That's why this watch uses what's called the Longa 901 movement. 90 in this case, standing for the year that development started on the movement itself, 1990. The watch wasn't launched until 1994, so all of the sophistication and refinement of this watch and its movement required a four-year running head start. Longa took no chances, and they debuted with their best foot forward. Let's take a look at what the aesthetic of this watch brings to the table because that's a key part of the Langa identity before we flip the case and check out the main event. Now the dial itself is asymmetrical. It is basically a small subdial with your hours and minutes featuring applied indexes and white gold Roman numerals. You also have small seconds, a power reserve indicator, and a grand dat on a vertical axis right here. We're not going to call it the grand dat because we're not in Switzerland. We'll call it a big date. And you can see they're all on a common axis vertically. And then there's another common axis running horizontally from the crown to the power reserve to the cannon pinion of the hours and minutes, and then over to the 9 o'clock station. So it's actually got a certain amount of vertical and bilateral order to it. Not symmetry, so to speak, but there is a sort of geometric logic to this watch that makes it something more than the chaotic assembly of complications and dials that it could have been with a less delicate touch. The dial is slightly cut out for the dials. The, the subdials themselves are on a slightly lower plane than the silver matte finished main dial, but what I want to emphasize here is that it's a very cool look. There's no guilloche here, there's very little texture, it's sort of a matte silver, as clean and, and cool basically as German racing silver BMWs, one might even say. The idea is to put all of the emphasis on the dial elements, the functional elements, starting with the Grand Date, and it's really highlighted. Its importance to the modern German watchmaking ethic is practically the same as the significance as of Geneva waves to Swiss watches, or the hallmark of Geneva, to Swiss watches built in the city or canton of Geneva. The Grand Date started in 1994 on the Longa one, and it came from JLC, actually. The patent itself was donated by Gunter Blumlein's JLC, and they went and they designed another one for their 70th anniversary reverso. But having the double-digit independent movement was considered to be a defining trait of modern German watches. As of 2000, Glashuta Original, Langa's larger Swatch-owned competitor, adopted one of their own, and it's kind of filtered down across Saxony. Such has been its influence in modern Saxon watchmaking. It's independently adjustable using this pusher right here at about 1030. 
The key thing here is that it has a lot of depth to it, and the polishing of this double-framed window is gorgeous. Every inch the equal of the, of the beveling you would see on a Geneva seal movement, only visible on the dial. The up-down, that's off-ab, off being up, ab being down, power reserve indicator traces an arc that keeps you apprised of the 72-hour power reserve. And speaking of the 72-hour power reserve, that's what this means right here. Doppel Federhaus means double barrel. So in order to achieve this power reserve in a 39 millimeter white gold case, Longa broke the mainspring up into two independent segments. They run them in parallel. Doppel Federhaus twin barrel 72 hour power reserve gives you just enough power reserve that if you do rotate between watches of your collection, this one's not going to wind down in between and have to be reset. When you've got a time and grand date feature going at the same time, that's a nice peace of mind to be able to see where your watch is in terms of state of wind and also know that an emergency rewind isn't going to have to be a daily occurrence if you're not wearing the watch. Now when you turn the watch over from this rather chilly aesthetic of the all silver ungrained dial, all of a sudden it becomes as warm as hot cocoa at a mountain lodge. The bottom line is this is German silver. It's a nickel copper hybrid that has a more lustrous, deeper, richer gold hue to it than, say, something like a rhodium-plated Geneva brass movement. You look at a Patek Philippe and it is blindingly silver. You look at a Langa and it's got this warm golden yellow glow to it. Now the term German silver is a bit of a misnomer. It is nickel copper and it's the copper that gives it that golden glow. What's cool about it is that it's also more dynamic than rhodium-plated brass. Over time it will attain a much deeper, more complex sort of metal patina. Not corrosion, just a sort of transformation that adds more definition to those glashute stripes and the texture between them and all of the wrought areas, including the beautifully anglaged elements of the three-quarter bridge right here and all of the inserts. This one right here is used to access the winding stem. All of these little inserts that allow the watchmakers to work on the watch without having to pull it completely apart due to the three-quarter plate, another element that's emblematic of German watchmaking. Now what I want to really focus on here is the balance staff. When I talk about things that are emblematic of German watchmaking in the modern day, the balance staff on the Langa is just as iconic as that double date on the dial. The balance staffs are hand engraved. Each artisan who works for Langa has a different style. And you can actually get a book from the manufacturer that'll show you which artisan works in which style. They mostly work from home. So if you go there, you're probably not going to meet them. But if you have that book, you can definitely identify them by name. And because it is hand engraved, it's one of those metier to art elements that is just not scalable. You see about 5,000 longas made every year. If they wanted to make more, they'd have to hire more engravers. This is not the kind of thing that you see in mass produced watches. And it's really an icon of Langa, and more than anything else, it's the signature of a handmade watch. A watch that is assembled, decorated, and tuned by human beings, not machines. And with only 5,000 timepieces built per year, Langa is nowhere near, for example, the 60,000 per year of Audemars Piguet or the 50,000 per year of Patek Philippe. Other elements here are highly traditional, again, in that German mold. The Chaton set pivot jewels, you can see these little screwed in jewels, they have a small gold cradle that holds them in place and then these little cobalt blue heat blued screws hold the chatons in place. That's an old technique that's used to center the pivot jewels because the German silver bridges are just so delicate it's hard to work them perfectly and get the jewels centered straight without destroying the bridges completely. So you have that intermediate buffer of the gold to preserve the beauty of the bridge, but also ensure that the jewel is centered with precision. Again, a 72 hour power reserve. It has a big bead escapement with a swan's neck regulator, 21,600 vibrations per hour. That's old school, big, slow, and lazy. You can hear it against the ear, but because of the swan's neck, which in this case features gorgeous black polish, reflects light in only one direction from just about any direction but head on, it looks black because it reflects light again in one plane. That's why it's called black polish. Awesome finish because of the swan's neck. It beats slow, but it's very accurate. Once regulated, that index is not going to go out of position. This Alanco Unsuna Langa 1 
arguably the icon, not just of Langa, but of all Saxon watchmaking, all German watchmaking, is available with a 100% complete box and set on our website, watchyouwant.com. Check it out. Everything from a deluxe polishing cloth to extensive illustrated references relating specifically to this model and several gorgeous boxes are included. See it, and I guarantee you will be a believer.